If you're looking for Mutt Coins to upgrade your Mutt game, go to GameRusher.com for cheap and safe Mutt Coins. You can use my discount code HUB at the website. Use the first link in the description down below and get that upgrade to your game. Here, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy Kush back at it again with another game day update video. So today we got a couple things to go over. The final injury report before the game. This one's really important compared to the other game days because of course for both the Bucks and the Giants. When I made my preview video for example just on Friday, they both had at least like six or seven players under injury reports, which is a lot. Of course, we know the big thing for the Giants was, of course, Will Hernandez testing positive for COVID. He's obviously going to be out. Um, not sure if it's the rest of the season or if it's going to be a couple of weeks, maybe two, three weeks. But obviously, Will Hernandez is out and he, you know, potentially was a risk to basically every other offensive lineman. We got some updates on them. And then on the Bucks side, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, they only have one player out of this game. So not much help towards the Giants there. So let's get right into it on the Bucks. The only player that's confirmed out is Chris Godwin. And you talk about they had guys like Godwin, Gronkowski, Scotty Miller, JPP, who leads their teams in sacks, Antoine Winfield Jr., who's, you know, in the running for defensive rookie of the year. They had guys like that on their injury report, but only Godwin is going to be out. Um, it's better than having nobody out for the Giants side. Maybe they can try and take advantage of that. Um, honestly, my thoughts on the preview of the game and how the game goes hasn't really changed from my preview video. So definitely check that out if you want to know more on that. And then on the Giants side of things, we have two people that are confirmed out and one that is doubtful as of right now. Devontae Freeman, our starting running back, he is going to be out this game. And I still truthfully don't know what happened with Freeman. It was an ankle injury is what they listed it as. And it definitely happened during the Eagles game. Because we all remember against the Eagles, he was only in there for probably, what, like the first quarter or something? And then they took him out and it was Wayne Gallman the rest of the way. We still don't know exactly when or how he got injured. And I'm not seeing any type of info on that. If you guys do know, please comment down below and, and let the people know as well as myself. But I'm not sure what's up with Freeman. Not sure how long he's going to be out for. But he's out for basically two weeks in a row now if you count like three quarters of the Eagles game. And then the other person that's out is Adrian Colbert, defensive back. You know, a rotational player. For the Giants, he I'm not sure how much time he played last week against the Eagles. Either way, our secondary, you know, barring a couple of guys, is filled with a bunch of rotationary pieces that are easily replaceable and honestly should be upgraded. So I don't really think this is necessarily a downgrade if we're missing him or anything. It's just missing one piece. It's like other than Bradbury, other than Logan Ryan, Jabril Peppers. You know, other than those couple of guys, you could maybe argue Julian Love because we've been using him so extensively across the field. Everybody else is kind of replaceable in that secondary. And then the one doubtful person is also in the secondary, Ryan Lewis with a hamstring injury. Now, I like Ryan Lewis a lot more than other people do because I recognize for Ryan Lewis for what he is. He's a guy that we picked up off of a practice squad and he's our second starting cornerback. And he performed well enough to gain that job, which isn't saying anything much, but he's definitely outperforming his spot as a practice squad player, which is why I respect Ryan Lewis. Now, he's definitely not good by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I still respect what he did to make it onto that team there. And that's really the injury updates for the games in particular today. The other thing I want to talk about during this video was Saquon Barkley, our star running back who very recently went through his successful foot surgery or um you know lower body surgery for his ACL injury and now he's on the road to recovery. Saquon, there's been a lot of things floating around since he got injured, you know what I'm saying? You got a couple of terms floating around that honestly maybe a bit accurate like injury prone. Then again, the dude has only had 3 years in the NFL. I mean for all we know, he could be healthy for the rest of the stretch of his career. Uh, he may not. I feel like it's just a little bit too, not necessarily too early, but I still feel like it's too premature to label him as injury prone. This is the same guy we got to try and remember. It's been a while now. It has been two years, but is this is the same guy during his rookie year that got 2,000 scrimmage yards behind an offensive line that was just as bad as the one we have right now performance-wise. 
So Saquon is on his road to recovery. And let's not forget, when fully healthy, he is one of the best in the league. And I just want to say, before I hop into a little bit of the information I got from this article here from ESPN.com, to give you guys a bit of hope, we all know, of course, Adrian Peterson is the greatest example of recovery from an ACL injury. One year after he was injured, he came back. He won the MVP, the best bounce back year ever, and had probably the best running back year in the history of the NFL. Ran the Vikings into the playoffs. Adrian Peterson is that goal and of course we all know there's a lot of comparisons between Barkley and AP in terms of the hype they came up came out of college with of being the best running back and basically the best players in their draft you know talking about they carrying their teams how they run the offense Adrian Peterson was that generally generational talent Saquon Barkley is supposed to be that generational talent for this generation but you don't need to look to AP to see a very successful, and I do mean very successful, recovery from ACL. All you need to do is, once again, look to the Vikings and to a guy who just had a four-touchdown game this past Sunday and ran the Vikings to victory, what was a one-win team against a uh, very talented Green Bay Packers team in Dalvin Cook. A lot of people forget, Dalvin Cook had an ACL injury, I think, maybe two, three years ago, and the Vikings never gave up on him. They had running backs, you know, to play for him those years that he was out you know they had Jet McKinnon at one time I think that they had Latavius Murray as well and then Dalvin Cook came back and they dropped those guys you know what I'm saying McKinnon 49ers Murray on the Saints and Dalvin Cook came back last year successfully you know fully recovered they didn't rush him or anything they gave him as much time as he needed had a sort of a breakout year last year establishing himself last year as one of the top five running backs of the 2019 season then he's back in 2020 here and right now, he's probably the best running back in the league, not named Derrick Henry the way he's performing. Dalvin Cook looks simply amazing. And with full and ample recovery time, he's doing good coming off the same injury that Saquon has right now. So it is possible to recover. And I do think Saquon is more talented than Dalvin. Athletically, he's probably equally matched with AP. So I believe if you give him ample time and let the dude recover, don't rush him. He's going to come back and be as good as he was, if not better than before, because Dalvin is arguably better than he was before the injury. Of course, while we all know Saquon's, you know, his injury has basically ended his season. He's still been around at Giants facilities. We've seen him at a couple of games in the, you know, the box supporting the team. Joe Judge is still keeping around in meetings, not only because he should still be around in meetings, he should still be learning, picking up as much as he can. Saquon is still a captain of this team. And while he can't be on the field physically, he's there as a leader and for support in the locker room. And that's what Judge points out a lot as you know one of his main reasons is keeping Barkley around of course we all know he still has that camaraderie and he's still a good friend um with the major people of the team like DJ and whatnot considering we saw the video of them out and about in Manhattan the other day and he has about 10 and a half months to recover now one thing that I'm gonna leave open to interpretation is that um Odell former giant current Cleveland Brown but also very very close friend of Saquon Barkley Odell was kind of Saquon's big brother his rookie year and they kept in touch since then they're still good friends Odell is also on an ACL injury I wouldn't be surprised if their rehab routines somehow intersect if they be interacting a lot this offseason and whatnot so don't be surprised if you see a bunch of stuff you know of Odell and Saquon hanging out and whatnot I'm just gonna put that out there into the atmosphere I'm not saying anything's gonna happen I'm not saying it's bad not saying it's good I'll let you guys interpret that as you will and now here's the thing like I mentioned since Adrian Peterson is still basically the best recovery you'll see it has been about nine years maybe ten years since AP's injury and I will say medical advancements have definitely jumped a lot since then um ACL injuries are not career ending like they used to be but they're definitely career altering you know what I'm saying it's still a major thing there's a reason people are knocked out for a year sometimes two years and still take maybe even two years to fully recover I'm gonna try and bank on the fact that Saquon is that generational player that he's supposed to be and say that maybe he'll be fully recovered by halfway through next season or maybe even week one once again he has about 10 and a half months to recover and don't forget it's not just the ACL there's also the meniscus which does take away some power from his knees so maybe we'll see a little less juking and Saquon will shift to more of a power type style of running which does fit this offense more I'm just throwing out ideas I'm not saying that's gonna happen by no means am I a medical professional just throwing that out there and hey man, Peterson, Adrian, AP, the legend himself, did speak to Saquon after Saquon got injured. Just kind of tell him the, like, the best advice he could give him is to just wrap your mind around the situation, shift your focus from 
the injury itself to the journey coming back into rehab into making yourself better and if i'm one to judge i would say saquon has successfully shifted his focus because he was in good spirits after his surgery from the picture his mom posted he's obviously in good spirits leading up to it from that video with dj and some other members of the crew out in manhattan i just hope everything goes well and he's back but you know this is our guy he's still my guy I just want to get some of this info out there to you guys put your comments down below let me know what you think and i'm out oh by the way oh i forgot to mention right before i end make sure you tune in tonight i will be live streaming the game you know bucks at giants with kid blue thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share i'll catch y'all in the next one